Well, I consider it the most dangerous threat we face. Pandemics, climate change, nuclear weapons, artificial intelligence. Humanity is facing some really big problems. But it doesn't have to be that way. If we work together, we might be able to overcome these big problems. And you can help make a difference. You've probably heard about some of the biggest threats to the future of humanity, but you might not have fully appreciated just how big these problems are. Climate change, future pandemics, dangerous artificial intelligence, and nuclear war all have the potential to end civilization as we know it. But it's not all doom and gloom. Lots of people are working on reducing these risks, and there's a way that you can help. In this video, we'll look at just why these risks are so scary and how you can make a difference for all the future generations to come. It's really important to care about the people we share our planet with today. But you probably also care about the people that are yet to be born. Your potential children and grandchildren, your friends' children and grandchildren, and even all the babies yet to be born all over the world. We want them to live happy, fulfilling lives, hopefully even better lives than we have today. If all goes well, there'll be lots of those future people. Some people have estimated that we can expect there to be around a septillion future humans. Now that's around a hundred trillion times today's population. In other words, it's a mind-blowingly big number of people. Those people have the potential to live really wonderful, happy, and prosperous lives. Having all those people around will likely lead to incredible new breakthroughs in science, technology, art, philosophy. We've managed to do some pretty incredible things with the relatively small number of humans that have lived so far. So just imagine what we could do with more people and more time. The sheer number of people that could exist, along with the potential that they have to live happy lives, provide us with really strong reasons for caring about the future of humanity. But you see, there's just one problem. If humanity goes extinct or civilization breaks down, these septillion future humans might never exist. And as we'll explore in this segment, that's a real risk. Given that, a growing number of people who have a long-termist worldview think that we should try our best to safeguard the long-term future of humanity. Because the numbers are so big, even a small risk of extinction is worth caring about and trying to avert. For instance, even if we had a one in a million chance of saving one septillion people, that gives us an expected impact of saving one billion billion people. That's a potentially huge impact. Admittedly, it's difficult to know how to interpret these numbers. They're educated guesses, and we're uncertain about a lot of things that might affect them. But one way to take it is this. Though we don't know exactly how important it is that we safeguard the future, it's likely to be really important. If you care about future people, it's extremely likely that reducing existential risk is going to work out to be one of the best things you can do to improve others' lives. You don't even have to believe that the human population will keep growing to think that existential risks are worth caring about. As researcher Carl Schulman has pointed out, the US currently spends up to $4 million to save one life. So if we multiply that by the entire US population, around 325 million people, it would be worth spending $1.3 quadrillion. And researchers think that we can save an awful lot more than 325 million people for an awful lot less than $1.3 quadrillion. But the motivation for caring about the future doesn't just rely on this kind of math. Everything we care about, poverty, health, politics, it's in the future. And we owe it to future generations to make sure that they get to live the happy lives that they deserve. But just what are the biggest risks and how can we avoid them? Let's start with climate change. Climate change is one of the most discussed issues in the world right now. It's widely accepted that it could be a major killer in the next few decades, if left unchecked. The World Health Organization predicts that in 30 years, it will be directly responsible for the deaths of over 250,000 people each year. But while we talk about what might happen in the next 100 years, we tend not to look at what might happen after that. Yet that could be an even bigger problem. I mean, the CO2 that we emit currently has an average atmospheric lifetime of 30,000 years. So even though most carbon dioxide is reabsorbed into the oceans after a few centuries, 
There's this very long tail, and even after 100,000 years, this 7% of the CO2 that we emit will still be in the atmosphere. In fact, evidence suggests that temperatures will only return to normal after many centuries. In the meantime, humanity could face some really big problems. Rising sea levels could wipe out coastal cities. Droughts could reduce food production and cause famines. And some places might be completely uninhabitable, leading to a huge refugee crisis and political instability. It's hard to tell how likely climate change disaster is though. We're pretty sure that some bad effects are unavoidable. We're already seeing that with the increased frequency of natural disasters like wildfires and hurricanes. And some think that there might be a 1% chance that the Earth gets 9 degrees hotter, which would render big parts of the planet uninhabitable. Fortunately, outright extinction is unlikely, but the risks of large-scale devastation are significant. The good news is that there are things that we can do to reduce those risks. One key way is to encourage innovation in low-carbon technology. This seems to have worked before. In the 2000s, the German government subsidised solar panels, helping to drive down the costs for the entire world and make them as widespread as they are today. Organisations like the Clean Air Task Force are hoping that we can do similar things with other technologies, like carbon capture and storage. Here's their co-founder, Armand Cohn. We push change in technologies and policies needed to get to a high energy, zero emissions planet at an affordable cost. If you're interested in supporting work like this, you can donate to the Founders Pledge Climate Fund, which donates to some of the most promising climate organisations out there. While climate change is a scary risk, most researchers that study existential risk think that other things are likely to pose even greater threats to our future. We're currently living through the COVID-19 pandemic, and most people would say it's been pretty terrible. As of today, COVID has been estimated to have killed tens of millions of people and caused trillions of dollars of damage to the global economy. But here's the really scary thing. Future pandemics could be much, much worse. By historical standards, COVID is a fairly small pandemic. We can compare it to the 1918 flu pandemic. I guess in 1918, the, uh, right now, the generally accepted death toll was probably between 50 and 100 million. Or if we go back a bit further, there's the Black Death, which is estimated to have killed around a third of Europe's entire population at the time. In many ways, we've got lucky with COVID, and we should be worried about future pandemics being much worse. That future scary pandemic could come in two forms. We could see a super deadly, naturally occurring pandemic, like the Black Death, that might kill loads of people, but it's less likely to wipe out humanity altogether. Infectious diseases account for a tiny percentage of animal extinctions, and the fact that natural pandemics haven't wiped us out yet, despite being around for a very long time, suggests that there's a fairly small probability of them making us extinct in the future. Instead, many researchers are more concerned about human-engineered diseases, pathogens that have been made more dangerous. If these pathogens leave the lab, either by accident or by someone who wants to kill people, they could wreak havoc across the world. And it's a real possibility. Around the world, some scientists are conducting research that could end up potentially making pathogens much more dangerous. This type of work, called gain-of-function research, helps scientists study disease and develop treatments. But if these pathogens escape, the research could backfire. According to one study of experts on catastrophic risks, by 2100, the risk of human extinction from an engineered pandemic is 2%. That's a worryingly high number. But thankfully, there's work we can do to reduce the risk. We could get better at making vaccines quickly, so we can immediately stamp out new dangerous illnesses. Or we could increase disease surveillance, so we can find pathogens early. Both of these techniques have helped us in the COVID-19 pandemic. But if we'd been better prepared, the pandemic might have been significantly less bad than it was. And if we get even better at them, we might be able to avoid future pandemics. Organisations such as the Johns Hopkins Centre for Health Security are working on just that developing strategies to deal with future pandemics and working with governments to help implement them. While previous pandemics have been bad, arguably the closest humanity ever came to destruction was during the Cold War. Tensions between the Soviet Union and America were extremely high, and Soviet soldiers had been told that if the Americans fired nuclear weapons, they should retaliate with nukes of their own. One day, 
Soviet officer Stanislav Petrov received a warning that the US had launched missiles. Defying orders, he decided to wait for more evidence before retaliating, and ultimately decided not to retaliate, assuming that the earlier warning had been a mistake. And he was right. And thanks to his good judgment, we managed to avoid the disastrous effects of nuclear warfare. The story of Petrov shows just how real a possibility nuclear devastation is. While nuclear stocks have declined significantly since the Cold War, an all-out war between the US and Russia today has an estimated death toll of around 50 million people, and the indirect effects could be even worse. And after a full-scale nuclear war, temperatures would plunge below ice age conditions. We would be in a nuclear winter. No crops would grow. It's estimated that 90% of the population of the planet would starve to death, and civilization would be destroyed. It's unclear how big these risks are, and some think that a nuclear winter is unlikely. Existential risk experts put the risk of extinction at around 1%, though the risk of killing over 1 billion people is estimated to be 10%, so it's a risk worth taking seriously. One way is to encourage countries to shrink their nuclear stockpiles, something which seems to have worked over the past 30 years. Another is to stop even more countries getting nuclear weapons, something we've been fairly successful at, and we can also try to improve relations between nuclear powers, so that the country's first reaction isn't to nuke each other into oblivion. All of this is really complicated though. Reducing stockpiles might actually increase the risk of nuclear war, because countries might be less hesitant to attack if they know that smaller stockpiles reduce the severity of the war. Our course page on nuclear security has more on all of this. We don't yet recommend a specific organisation working in this space, but the Nuclear Threat Initiative and the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace are two good organisations trying to help. But while climate change, pandemics and nuclear war have people very concerned, a new technology might be the scariest of all, artificial intelligence. AI could enable the development of intelligent, autonomous weapons, which could in turn kill millions. Some activists are trying to get the UN to ban such weapons because of this danger. But AI could be dangerous even without us intending it to be. And it's really easy to accidentally give AI the wrong problem to solve. And often we don't realize that until something has actually gone wrong. That's part of why many prominent people are so worried about AI. AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. But I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. An AI that's as smart or smarter than human beings might be much closer than you think. Most machine learning experts think that there's a good chance of artificial general intelligence being developed this century. And if things go badly, they could go really badly. AI might replace humans as the world's most intelligent species, in the same way that we replace gorillas and chimps. It's probably fair to say that those apes aren't thrilled that their environment depends on our actions. And in the same way, we might not be too happy if we became subject to an AI's whims. Oxford philosopher and Giving What We Can founder Toby Ord puts the risk of extinction from AI in the next 100 years as high as 10%, higher than any of the big risks we've looked at. This is, of course, a very rough estimate. There's simply too much uncertainty for us to be confident in our guesses. But the estimated risk is high enough that a lot of people have started working on finding out how we can avoid it. Organisations like the Centre for Human Compatible Artificial Intelligence are doing research to help make sure we don't accidentally make a dangerous AI. Other organisations like GovAI are conducting research into trying to figure out which policies governments should be trying to adopt to regulate AI's development, and what the best practices for AI research organisations should be. As you've seen in this segment, there are some really scary risks out there. But there's work we can do to alleviate these risks. If you care about the trillions, even septillions of people to come and want to help them, you can. You could donate to one of the many organisations we've mentioned so far. In most cases, they'll pay for people with highly specialised skills to work on the problems, giving them the chance to develop solutions which could reduce those risks. You could also donate to one of the funds focused on the long-term future. Those funds will take your donation and use their expert knowledge to allocate it to organisations they think can have the biggest impact. 
We've put links to some of our favourite organisations and funds in the description below. You can also get involved more directly. Join your local effective altruism group, where you can find other like-minded people, many of whom will care deeply about the future just as much as you do. If there isn't a group near you, you could start one of your own. Also try to spread awareness of these risks among your own friends and family. Simply sharing this video is a great place to start. You could use your political power too, by voting for the candidates and parties that are working on reducing these risks. And if you're feeling really dedicated, you could dedicate your career to working on these issues. If that sounds interesting, our friends at 80,000 Hours have great advice for you. And remember, while existential risks, like the ones we've talked about here, are important, helping to avoid them isn't the only way that you can make a difference. There are ways your charitable giving can help tackle more immediate issues too. Check out our other coverage on these topics, such as the coverage looking at improving global health and development, and on improving animal welfare. And if you want to learn more about the best ways to do good, sign up to our newsletter, where we'll send you information and resources about using your resources to do the most good. Humanity faces some big threats, but by working together, we can help avert catastrophe and build a better future. I invite you to be part of that, to be a good ancestor for the generations to come. Until next time, keep on doing good.